So the first question is, if you are Norwood 6 at 36 and your baldness has, has been stable for many years and your donor area is good and you get a hair transplant, will all the transplanted hairs fall off if you do not take finasteride and minoxidil? Well, my friend, if you are a Norwood 6 at 36 years and have stable baldness, getting a hair transplant can be effective, but there are important considerations regarding post-operative care. Transplanted hairs are taken from areas resistant to balding, as you all know. So they typically remain for life once established. However, without the use of medications like finasteride and minoxidil, you may still experience hair loss in non-transplanted areas, areas you do not have. So you do not have anything to worry. So coming to the second question, and that was posted yesterday on my YouTube channel in the comment section. The question is, I have very thick black and dense body hair from chest to private area, as thick as the public area, whatever that means. If these are transplanted to my head, will they grow long and how long will they survive? Is there any test by which we can estimate survival time? So the answer is transplanting body hair to the scalp can be a viable option, especially for individuals with thick body hair. However, there are several factors to consider regarding growth and longevity of these hairs. When body hair such as chest or pubic hair is transplanted to the scalp, it may not behave exactly like scalp hair. Body hair typically has a different growth cycle and texture. While it can grow longer once established, it may not reach the same length or density as scalp hair. Studies suggest that survival rate of transplanted body hair can vary very significantly, often yielding around 60% success for hair other than beard hair, which is 100%. That is beard hair has 100% survival. It's the best hair to transplant. This means that not all transplanted hairs will thrive in the new location, in the new environment, and the final outcome can be unpredictable. Factors like the quality of donor hair and the technique used during transplantation play crucial roles in determining survival. Unfortunately, there is no definitive test to predict how long transplanted body hair will survive. Generally, once established, these follicles can remain for life, similar to scalp hair, provided they are well cared for post-transplant. Regular follow-ups and medical treatment and salient lifestyle changes can enhance the health of transplanted follicles. So coming to the next question, is it better to use topical finasteride with minoxidil combination for hair loss? Does it have the same effect as oral finasteride does? I am 28. Currently, I have been using 2% topical minoxidil only. So you are using 2% minoxidil and you are very hesitant about oral finasteride, it seems. You seem to be not doing what it takes if you have an active gene and if you are young, which you are at 28. Your baldness gene just needs one trigger. One day your baldness will be triggered due to some external or internal event and much, if not all, will be lost in the blink of an eye. I feel, you're, I feel you're wasting your time getting influenced by uninformed non-medical operators on the social platforms that you inhabit, that you inhabit with them. This is not the time to try ineffectual treatments like topical finasteride. You can leave this for later when your baldness stabilizes. For now, get a consultation. Get a consultation with a doctor who's competent in his craft, who does not monetarily have an axe to grind with your treatment. With his help, Get on to time-tested treatment, FDA-approved treatment, and save your hair. The next question is, can we use RCP hair serum, that is Redensil Capixil Procapil serum, instead of minoxidil after the hair transplant? By all means, do if you think minoxidil is not giving you the benefit or it is causing problems. But never for once think that these miscellaneous treatments are going to halt the progression of your baldness for they are not DHT blockers. Fifth question. Sir, is finasteride enough for hair loss treatment as I don't want to use minoxidil? I am taking finasteride one milligram. 
Well, taking oral finasteride 1 mg daily can be effective for treatment, treatment of male pattern hair loss, that is androgenic alopecia, on its own. Clinical studies have shown that finasteride significantly promotes scalp hair growth and prevents further hair loss in a substantial number of men. Specifically, around 48% of men experienced improved hair growth after one year of treatment, with results continuing to improve over two years. However, while finasteride can be sufficient for many individuals, combining it with minoxidil may enhance the overall results. Minoxidil works through a different mechanism by increasing blood flow to the hair follicles and increasing the duration of the anagen phase, that is the growth phase. This combination can lead to better maintenance of hair density and potentially faster results. If you prefer not to use minoxidil, continuing with finasteride alone can still yield positive outcomes, but it's important to note that the effectiveness can vary from person to person. Regular follow-ups with your chosen doctor are recommended to assess your progress and make any necessary adjustments to your treatment plan from time to time. Additionally, if you stop taking finasteride, any benefits gained may begin to reverse within six months. And this is a variable. It, you cannot really put your finger on what will happen to one person and how, how treatment plans and how treatment outcomes will be different for the person. So it is very, it is a trial and error method and you have to be in touch with your doctor, your uh, hair loss doctor from time to time. And then we come on to the sixth question. Do you perform direct hair insertion technique where first slit making happens and then simultaneous extraction, sorting and implantation? I've heard that in this process, the maximum out of uh, scalp duration of graft is maximum of 30 minutes only thereby helping in better survivability of grafts after transplant and hence better growth. I'm looking, looking for a good surgeon for transplant and I'm really preferring this method. I have answered this in a previous video, but I'll answer this again in brief. Though heavily touted as a technique, I do not think anyone ever does this since this is no full, there is no full live procedure showcased ever in a hair transplant workshop or on the internet. You can do this research. You can do the search. If it was a good thing to do, everyone would have vied with one, one another to post it, which they have not till date. I tried doing this in 2010, but realized that the grafts come out in random quality with different hair counts. When we do plantation, there is a sequence in which the grafts are planted, starting from the leading edge, leading rows where singles are placed for naturalness, and then few rows of two hair grafts and strategic, strategic placement of three hair grafts behind. This is to give a natural flow, a natural soft look to the hairline. Also grafts need to be dissected under a microscope before implantation. So I modified my technique over the years and now use in vivo preservation of grafts. And you can see the link to my technique above. And this works very well for me. It has worked for many years. Cutting down the out of body time is significantly. So try asking the clinic you are referring to, to show you an entire procedure of this hair transplant. At the end of the day, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I hope you get what I mean. So the, now the seventh question. Do I need to stop taking finasteride before marriage? I'm not planning for a baby now. So you do not necessarily need to stop taking finasteride before marriage, especially if you are not planning to have children in the near future. Finasteride is primarily used to treat male pattern baldness by inhibiting the conversion of testosterone to its active metabolite dihydrotestosterone or DHT. While some studies suggest that finasteride can reduce sperm count and affect semen parameters, these effects are generally reversible, short lasting and they reverse after discontinuation of the medication. That is for sure. Research indicates that while finasteride may lower semen uh, sperm counts in some men, it does not typically lead to permanent infertility. In fact, many men see significant improvements in sperm counts within three months after stopping the drug. If you are concerned about fertility, it may be wise to monitor your sperm parameters from time to time 
and consult with a competent hair loss doctor. Now coming to the eighth question. So you are saying if someone can't tolerate finasteride, there is no hope. Should they just let it all go? Not ever think of a hair transplant. So if someone cannot tolerate finasteride, there is still hope for addressing hair loss and they should not feel that a hair transplant is out of reach. While finasteride is effective in preventing further hair loss by blocking the hormone DHT, it is not mandatory for achieving successful results from a hair transplant in those who are over 35 and in those who are younger and their baldness gene has more or less switched off or become quiescent. I have several people who never took finasteride on their own but had great results. But then you are leaving a lot to chance given the fact that you have spent so much of money, your time and your emotions on your procedure. At least take it for six to nine months and give your follicles the best environment to grow, the best chance to grow. The transplanted hair follicles typically taken from areas relatively resistant to DHT can grow permanently in their new location. However, it's important to understand that without finasteride or similar treatments, existing non-transplanted hair may continue to thin or fall out over time. This could lead to an uneven appearance as the natural balding process progresses in untreated areas. For individuals who are sensitive to finasteride or experience side effects, who are young and have a strong family history of baldness, I would advise them to not walk down this garden path. There is no alternative treatment that can do the, the work of a DHT blocker. Consulting with a qualified hair transplant surgeon can help tailor a treatment plan that aligns with individual needs and preferences. Ultimately, while finasteride can enhance the longevity of hair transplant results by preserving ex existing hair, it is not the only path forward for those considering a hair transplant and fulfill the conditions I have just stated. So we go on to the ninth question. Hello, doctor. I am doing night shifts. So I wake up at six in the evening. I have a question, though I'm awake, waking up at six in the evening, will my body peak testosterone at morning or in the evening? What is the right time to take finasteride when I am doing night shifts? So, well, when working night shifts, your body's natural testosterone peak may shift as well. There is no denying the fact. Testosterone levels typically rise in the early mornings. But if you wake up at 6 p.m., your peak may occur later in the day. However, this fluctuation is generally not significant enough to impact the timing that you take finasteride. So continue to take the medication around 10 p.m. while on your night shift. Now going on to the 10th question. During pregnancy, can we use oral or topical minoxidil or we should stop just like finasteride? So topical minoxidil is classified as FDA pregnancy category C. This means that animal studies have shown adverse effects on the fetus, but there are no adequate well-controlled studies in humans. There have been reports linking topical minoxidil to fetal malformations and other adverse effects. For instance, cases of hypertrichosis, that is excessive hair growth in infants, have been noted following maternal exposure to minoxidil during pregnancy. And this is a huge thing. Additionally, one study indicated significant fetal malformations associated with maternal use of topical minoxidil. Thus, the risks cannot be ruled out. Best is to abstain from these drugs and not land up with a problem that can have far-reaching consequences, far-reaching repercussions in your family life, problems that will dwarf your hair loss woes. So those are the questions, the 10 questions that I got yesterday on my YouTube channel answered. I'm sorry that YouTube live streaming is not working today due to some reason. I have to take a coaching class with them because I'm a newbie and amateur. So have a nice day. God bless you.